Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Wargame. Wargame, whose, um, let's say, birthday it is today, because according to Steam, at least, the game came out on April 17th, 2014. So the game is now six years old, and, well, we're still playing it with uh, well, pretty serious numbers for a game that's six years old. Mostly because there really aren't that many alternatives around. I still think that Wargame is a bit unique in the sort of genre that it fills. There's, um, of course, the more base building type of RTSs, although even those are fairly thin at the moment. You got the military games along the lines of World of Tanks or Modern Warfare or War Thunder, but that's just controlling one unit. The real military strategy games like these, um, well, maybe Slytherin Gaming still has some of them that you can play, but they're not really going to be quite similar to Wargame Red Dragon. So, um, shout out to Wargame Red Dragon. Happy birthday on the release, and, um, well, may there be a successor soon. At least such is my hope. As for this match, we're doing a 2v2. Well, we are. I mean, uh, we got Haka and Stretch versus Nostali and Velociraptor. These guys are duking it out on Tropic Thunder in a 2v2 conquest game. Judging by the amount of starting units that each team gets, it's not going to be a very uh, much let's flood the map with units game. It's going to be a more strategic approach, especially early on. And it's going to be an interesting way to see how these guys can test this, uh, well, this, this pretty wide area where you can get units in tree cover, building cover, um, spotting positions such as these small tree lines over here. You got this little town over here, which is usually not exactly used, but hey, it's an option. Um, as for the decks that Blue and Red are using, I don't have any clue. Uh, the guy who sent this in, Stretch, he just sent me an email with the replay, which is normally something I just delete upon impact, because I very much want people to send in replays through my website and not through just random emails. Because through the website, I really uh, know what sort of a game it is, how many people are in it, how long it is, what the deck code is, etc. So it's really um, a solid format. And if you have a good replay that you want me to have a look at, then by all means send it in. With the caveat, keep this in mind, I get a lot of these things. And that means that with the two slots of war game that I do per week, on average that is, um, it's going to be a contest between the replays that get sent in. Some of them are really good, some of them um, might be very good games but have a terrible description, so if the terrible description doesn't get my attention, then it's still going to get just ignored. So uh, try to sell me on your replay as much as you can. Now, we're looking at a bit of blue four movement over here. They're going to... F looks like they're going for a bit of terrain grab with a couple of Lynx AH-7s. There's also a Lynx AH-7 with the Command Infantry inside. It is Conquest after all. There's another Blackhawk, again, with Command Infantry. And this will impact the amount of units that Blue 4 has available. If you spend more on your CVs, you have to spend, well, a total of 200 points less, or actually maybe 100 points less, because of course Red also has to start with two CVs. You get to spend 100 points less than the enemy, and that could be a problem. Gamma 2, dashing forward from Nostali, seems to have encountered the Black Hawk. Black Hawk takes a hit. The second Gamma missile just narrowly misses, and the Rangers take a position directly underneath the Gamma, and are able to shoot it down. That is the first kill. At least they have something of a position over here. Over on the far right, we have the uh, SAS from Haka, who are already pushing up to a pretty uh, well, a pretty aggressive position. I really do wonder how long they can hold on to that. And they're making life miserable for the helicopters on Red 4. The TY-90, the MD-500D, and, oh, and that was quite close indeed, the MI-8. And the MI-8 did offload the infantry and promptly crashed right on top of it, killing off all the infantry. Another SAS group over on the far right has taken a position here. They can do a medium amount of spotting and, of course, engage vehicles and infantry and helicopters alike. Over towards the middle, Red has definitely taken possession of the middle. we got the Padobranchi, uh, Prukuminici. I'm probably completely butchering that, but the moment that people start to add all sorts of fancy signs to the letters, I get confused. 
Um, OT, MT, yep, here we go. Uh, Mehani Chovana are in position to cover the bridge. But it doesn't look like Blue is too interested in pushing across that bridge anyway. They have a plus two, although it's anybody's guess how long that's going to last. So their main objective is probably just to hold on to more terrain. Red is flowing the area with more infantry. We've got more OTM-60s coming in. Another MI-17 with what could be Gorna Strelke. Uh, well, not if they're... Check. Not exactly sure what's going to come out of that, but I think it's some sort of support team because I don't believe you'd fly in an HGM team by an MI-17. Now, the uh, Red 4 units have crossed the bridge. Pilot Branchi are now fighting off against US Marines. And the US Marines are su supported by Rangers and an LVTP-7. Unfortunately for the Rangers, the Pilot Branchi are supported by the MI-17 with the 122mm rocket pods. And they immediately wipe it out. That leaves just 5 Marines versus 13 Pilot Branchi. And the LVTP-7, because of all the terrain, is not accurately able to help out until quite late in the battle. And there's only one marine surviving. And sure enough, now the LVTP-7 is doing good damage. But then the uh, Padubranchi wipe at the marines and the LVTP-7A1. Harrier flies over, and I'm not sure exactly how he pulled this off. Because that paveway, or rather those four paveways, they went here, 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 and... Here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, I think he sort of lost the laser lock or something. Now, the left flank on blue side is very weak. There's a Schneska pushing up. It just killed the recon unit on blue force team. And the only unit that's currently potentially going to get in the way is an M2A2 Bradley. This one has to kill the Schneska, and I think it can get away with it. Schneska has four front armor and an auto cannon that pierces two. This one has 5 front armor and an auto cannon that pierces 3. So the closer they get, the more damage they will do to each other. But the Bradley also has the infantry and they have the TOW 2 missile. Although arguably firing a TOW 2 at a Schneska is a bit much. Now interestingly, Blue 4 has a Black Hawk over here. Stretch is moving the Black Hawk over to the left flank or the right flank for Red 4. And if the reconnaissance unit inside there, which I'm expecting are going to be rangers, get to an advantageous position, they might get a lot of intel on whatever red is bringing in. Points-wise, blue is still generating that plus two. Although they might start to lose a few positions here and there, because I don't think they're going to hold on to the terrain that they have for very long, especially delta. Once delta goes, bravo is very much at risk. Because the only thing that's currently standing between all of these units and this command is a Lynx and a couple of Green Jackets. Pinsgauer is unarmed. Fortunately, there's a Bradley and a Warrior coming in. And these guys, between the two of them, have two very dangerous autocannons. And will be able to hold off any vehicles for quite a while. And the Padabranchi, fortunately, are the Padabranchi base, not the Padabranchi 90. Which are capable of one-shotting almost any vehicle at range. Over on the far right, the SAS are pushing forward. But they are caught in a very, well, a very tough position. They're engaged by an MI4, which has been cleverly landed. So that means that the SAS cannot take it out with a Stinger. But they still have an AT4. And they're willing to use it. So that is the MI4 gone. And now they're being engaged by two PTR 80s with autocannons and a sniper team from the other side. So the SCS are nowhere safe. And there we go. Another SCS group over here. Um, he's moving them as well. I'm not sure where he wants to go with those guys, though. Let's check in with those later. Foxtrot, pretty solidly controlled by Red. Yukionde, Bantank, Fagot, and another Yukionde 90 group. They're controlling the bridges, and it's not likely that Blue is just going to drive in here anytime soon. Speaking of driving in, those vehicles that I mentioned previously, the Bradley and the Warrior, they have been dropping off their infantry, but the infantry are not having a good time in trying to approach these buildings. A Harrier tries to drop, gets a couple of bombs off, and this one dropped the 500 kilogram bombs. And that could seriously impact the uh, Mehanichova now over here. Oh, that was one survivor. One survivor only. 
A Centurion Aviary just looks like it's gonna drive right up to the building where any of these infantry are hiding and whack it over the head with a 100, uh, sorry, an M135. That's 8 HE. Even in building cover, that'll definitely leave a mark. And unfortunately for the Warriors, uh, the ATGMs are being flung their way. Warriors are forced to, forced to retreat at the moment. Over here, we got a very aggressive move by a couple of Rangers. They've been dropped off. A Q5D goes for a gun run and a bombing run, leaving just three Rangers alive. But look at how close they are to the command infantry. Making matters worse, an MI-17 flies over, trying to take out the Rangers with a machine gun before they get into the building, but it's just too late. The Rangers do get a bit of a return shot, but the MI-17 is not going to be going down to that. But they do know where the command infantry is. It's now one Ranger versus five command infantry gentlemen. So it's going to be a very unfair fight, especially once that M84AN starts to join. And there we go. Rangers are no more. Blue still has their plus one lead, courtesy of Red for capturing Echo. Um, I'm not really sure why Red decided to prioritize Echo. Maybe because it's um, a harder to control sector. I don't know. They are, however, bringing in another CV, which is going to capture Gulf. And in the meanwhile, they're hunting down the SAS that were still harassing these flanks. Once these guys are dead, these units get freed up to move further down to this town, which would then again lock down another position. Now at this point, there's a lot of blue for infantry around, and all the red for infantry has been pushed out of Delta. Blue can capture that. That would be another plus one for them, as red for has just captured Hotel. Leaving red for at a plus one, and red is also going to capture Gulf putting red at a plus three. Over on the back line of Juliet, we have the Rangers in Juliet. Unfortunately, the CV is on the other side of the river. So much as the Rangers would probably like to hunt them down, they're not quite capable of going all the way over there. They can, however, see what is coming in. Probably a lot of transports with infantry inside, as they well know. So they're going to have to figure out something in order to counteract those infantry units. Another Harrier flies in, and I am really quite surprised at how easy these hang Harriers are just bombing everything. There is almost no red for anti-air response. They do have one Sava, but that's it. They also did just buy a couple of AA weapons, the HQ-61s. Those provide a significant threat to the Harriers, but it's going to take them at least a minute or two to get into position. Green Jackets, Fusiliers and Warrior look like they're trying to push across the bridge. If they can get a foothold here, that would be a very nice step forward. Because then you can place your own HGM units in here and lock down this bridge, but towards the other angle. Getting into Echo is going to be very challenging. M84AN is trying to push over the bridge at a very, very bad time for the Fusiliers and the Green Jackets. Because these guys are now caught out in the open. And another MI-17 with again 122mm rocket pods takes them out. Blue 4 does have some AA. The Stormer fires once, twice, misses the second missile and the MI-17 survives, at least temporarily. Stormer fires again and that's the end of the MI-17. Although the damage has been done. Now if you cannot drive across a bridge, you can always fly across the river. And that's exactly what Hakka over here is doing. A couple of Lynx AH-7s ready to drop off the infantry. Completely circumventing that overlook position that the Gionde have over the bridges. And the Paratroopers 90 are ready to engage. Now that the Yukyonde have been spotted, the Lynx AH-7s quickly offload their rocket pods, leaving only two Yukyonde surviving. There are reinforcements inbound. Another helicopter, which tried to do a bit of a rocket pod run against the paratroopers here, but not successfully. Only two of them died, and the paratroopers are still there. Another well-orchestrated bombing run here, wiping out the Gionde, and the paratroopers can just easily capture this town. Once they have the town, they might be able to bring in a command infantry later, if they can still fly one of those in. Another Harrier tries to fly in. This time around, it does get shot at by the Sava. And, uh, let's see, the HQ-61s? Where'd those go? Here. Yeah. They have also been firing, those AA missiles. Now, Red is not too pleased with all the paratroopers which are going to be uh, parked in this town. 
And they make that uh, disgruntlement known by a B5. Which drops right on top of the town. Leaving most of the paratroopers, well, relatively unharmed. But at least their helicopters, they got the business end of the B5 charge. And completely wiping out a couple of Lynx A87s. The other Lynxes still have some rocket pods left. So they can still do damage against enemy infantry as it happens to push across. At this point, the Rangers are still scouting, uh, almost dead on top of the, the past Praga. Blue is now shelling the FOB, which definitely gives Red for the information that the FOB is being spotted, and that they might need to devote some attention to this flank. If they don't, then there's, well, more potentially suspicious casualties in the backs of their line. What are they using to shoot that? A M106, uh, or sorry, M109A6 Paladin. Another Harrier comes in. Looks to go for the bombing run over here on the Padobranchi, which just happened to be moving from building to building. But... Yep, yeah, they did wipe out one squad. One squad was unlucky on that side. Second uh, bombing run comes in, and again, very little anti-air response. Because the HQ-61, singular actually, is all the way over there. The second Harrier wipes out the Padobranchi, leaving just the uh, Mehanichovana in position here. If the US Marines can push across with a bit of vehicle support, they can probably get a foothold in Echo. And they're gonna need one, because Red is now sitting at a plus three. The situation for Blue 4 is not looking good. They still, however, have 26 minutes, or of course, until the 500 point time limit fills up, to uh, counteract those moves. And something is afoot over on the left flank. I don't believe that Red 4 quite knows what's going on here, but we got M551A1s, which are uh, <laughs> happily swimming across the river instead of using the bridge, demonstrating all of that amphibious capability. LVTP7A1s as well, just no infantry in there. We got Delta Force, another recon vehicle, and a longbow. Stingers in the uh, forest over here in case Red 4 does anything funny with their air patrols. And if these guys can push through, well, they need to kill a couple of Padobranchi and some transports. One recon tank, which is already half health. And then India is wide open. Now, as Blue is preparing that push, the Rangers have been detected. There are attack markers over here from Nostali, and they, knows exa or they know exactly where the Rangers are. Past Praga being brought in. That is a very dangerous machine gun group. And on top of that, the rangers just got bombed to within an inch of their life, leaving only one guy standing. The Hera gets detected, or gets the spot on the rangers, and then the Pest Pragas rush in and kill off the rangers. Still, that might have distracted Red 4 for just a moment, so that Blue can push here. M8 AGS pushes forward, killing off the transport and the infantry in it. The M84AN now makes its presence known, wiping out an LVTP-7 just as it uh, crosses. The 551 is actually trying to do damage against the M84AN with a heat round from its 152mm gun. And on the other flank, the M8 actually is the one that I believe takes the kill. The M8 got a flank shot on the M84AN, and now all of these vehicles don't have anything to fear as they're moving towards India. Over here on the right, Blue 4 has once again recaptured the town. They are more or less holding it, although there is a Red 4 incursion over here with Yukon Day 90, which are being backed up by BTR 80, so it's quite risky. But what they haven't been doing is providing anti air. And as such, the Lynxes are capable of providing quite a bit of rocket pod. And there you go, that's most of the Yukon Day dead. That's all of them gone. That leaves the BTR 80s without a spotter and unable to fire. They have also brought in a command section, an HQ section over here. And that means that at least they can stem the flow of points a bit. Um, that is until... And I'm not even sure what exactly got them here. That was some sort of bomb. Might have been a B5? I don't know. It wiped out the command section. But they are down to a plus one. Red 4, that is. So Red 4, sure enough, they have 357 points and counting. But the pressure is mounting on this flank here on red. They have no units, but Velociraptor does know that something is going on here. He might not exactly know where the units are, but he definitely has an inclination that something is going to be happening on this flank. And 
It seems like the red just does not have too many units available to try and push those guys back. Warrior motivating the BTR 80s to get out of here. Uh, this guy has six frontal armor, and that is a bit much for the three armor piercing of the BTR 80 to go through. Um, the HGMs from the Conquerors, however, will have absolutely no problem with the armor on the Warrior. And the Warrior just narrowly didn't get hit by one of the Conquerors missiles, but does fall back. Lynx 3 on station, already firing a bunch of Hellfires and properly securing the area against any vehicle incursions. It does probably have to go back to base and get resupplied. It's going to be off station for a while. Blue still has a bunch of infantry over here, but it looks like they're not actively looking to push. There's another wave of vehicles coming up. More Bradleys. Sorry, singular, one Bradley. MBT-70 and an M8. Although it is running out of fuel, that could be a problem. Uh, there's another BM-24 group coming in. Okay. That's not exactly what I would buy at this stage. I wonder why they decided to pick this. Because this is 100 points that they might have been spending better on frontline units. Now the Q5D comes in. The Stormers are ready. And they kill off the Jets. The Jets narrowly misses the HQ section there. These guys are not... Well, I guess they're doing push-ups in the middle of the fight. <laughs> uh, they were sort of half panicked, half not panicked, I guess. Anyway, um, note the position of the Stormers. They are just below the terrain level, just below the ground level, in the river. And they're using that amphibious capability to predict, uh, or to behave unpredictably, and make it difficult for Red Ford to get an artillery strike on them. At this point, Rangers are about to get into contact with other recon infantry. Yes, I nicely talked around the name of the recon unit there. M8 AGS and Delta Force are trying to secure over here in India, where another BOV M86 is coming in. It should be a one-shot for Delta. Then they might have to encounter a sniper team, which again the M8 could be assisting with. At this point, no more point gain for Red 4. Blue 4 currently has enough sectors that they're not leaking any more points. See, this I don't quite get. The one reason why I think he would do it is to try and go after the HQ section. You'd have to get really lucky. But seeing as they don't have any way to follow up on that attack, that was a bit of a wasted attack right there. A couple of Gamma 2s look like they're being forced into a position where they're not that useful. Because against Delta, they don't have any way to attack. Against the uh, M8s and the M551A1s, they do have an attack. But that was a Chaparral firing once, nailing two. Both Gammas are dead and approaching the ground at uh, speeds which are quite unsafe for landing. The Senka team is gone which means the Delta Force can now easily walk up to the command infantry and execute them. That would put Blue at a plus two. Super Galab pushes in, kills off the MBT-70 that's rushing across the field. And a couple of Harrier bombing runs are being executed over here on this flank with a load of Lynx A87s in support and the paratroopers just have to wrap up and then they have a foothold in Echo as well. So Red is now being pushed everywhere. Echo they're losing the sector in India. Over on the right, they're still safe. This is where Blue is currently not executing an attack. Yet. Also note the Black Hawk over here, which is dropping off a command group. If that command group gets in here, then Blue is not just going to be at a plus two, but at a plus four. I just need to hunt down the command infantry here, and there we go. Uh, detonating the resupply truck on top of the command infantry, that worked. WZ-551s and BTR-80As are hastily being scrambled into this position, trying to get the deltas away from there, but it's too late. Red is now losing points, or rather blue is gaining points at a rate of plus two. Once the TACOM gets into a position, that's a TACOM or a point lead of plus four. And then, situation for red is going to get very, very dangerous. Because a plus two is something you can sustain for a while. A plus four, it starts to get really painful really quick. 
paratroopers are almost on top of the other command infantry over here, which is going to be another plus one for blue. They're currently being uh, delayed for a bit, but not for very long, as once again it turns out to be the Lynx AH-7s, which get the kills. And now they're right on top of the command infantry. Now over here, back in uh, India, they have the Longbow and the Super Cobra, so anything that gets too close is going to get killed off pretty quick. The Sava does try to shoot at them, missing two shots, three shots. Yeah, the third hit, the fourth missed. And that's still eight missiles left, so the Apache Longbow has to fall back, as much as it probably hates doing it. TY-90 comes in, that's another big threat to the Longbow. And unfortunately, the Chaparral is a bit out of position, so it's going to be down to the Stingers over here to try and shoot down that Hilo. Unless Delta just points their machine guns upwards and starts to take out the TY-90, which you can still see up, upside down? Upside down over there. Blue at a plus five. Having killed off the command infantry over here. And now the paratroopers are hunting down the Conquerors. The Delta are probably not going to survive this, but then again, they don't really have to. It's a bit cruel to be sacrificing your Delta Force like this, but you still have a decent control over this area. The M8 might still be able to take some shots, provided that it's not too deep in the woods. It is out of fuel, so it won't really be able to get any good shots off. But you still need to hold on for a little longer. That plus five will just tick over and over and over and they're going to gain some points. Velociraptor has already quit, leaving just Nostali to fight this battle. The position in Hotel is pretty weak. They have a Bantank Fagot, an AGGM team, a Sniper team, a bit of anti-air, uh, well, a scattering of transport units, 57mm rocket pods, anti-air team, BTR-80, and... Hakka is asking for smoke so that the Royal Marines can push up. I'm not really sure what he wants to push with. Because Royal Marines pushing out through the open over here, that's going to take a while. M8 AGS is now fighting for its life against the Legion. And the Legion are not very good at dealing with a tank. Because they only have HE, but this thing only has three frontal HE, or sorry, three frontal armor. And against BTR 80As, which are rushing your flank, that is most definitely not going to be enough. Bradley, now trying to keep the enemy away from the command infantry over here, using TOW 2 missiles. Uh, we got the M81 from the M551A1 firing. Come on, we need a bit more. Blue is back to a plus three. As Red brings in a command infantry over here. Hold up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that is inside the sector. So they have countered the, uh, the well, the flow of blue four points a bit. But now blue four is also making a move over here. Royal Marines are pushing. Paratroopers are pushing against the HGM teams. And once again, it's the Lynxes who help out. If you lose a Lynx A87, it's just a waste of 30 points. But overall, these guys have been very successful, the Lynxes, in supporting all sorts of infantry offensives. Royal Marines against BTR 80s is not a great match, unless they can get the drop on them, like that. Red has recaptured India, completely killing off the command group from Blue. So Blue is back at a plus one. But Blue is also about to kill off another command infantry, or sorry, command unit over here, and that's another plus two. They're still not making moves on the right flank, but then again, they don't have to. Because they've already got a, a pretty decent momentum going over here. Let's see, is that Apache Longbow still around? No. It might have been shot down, because I was hoping that the, uh, the Longbow could fly in and take out the M84. The US Marines, however, with their AT4s, might be able to do just that, as the M84 is rushing to a position that's very risky for the M84 to be in. Oh, these guys are set to move, not attack move. Oh dear. Pay attention. Hit. Second hit. 84s have a good rate of fire of 20 rounds a minute. There's another hit. We need one more. You better be quick before the M84AN gets out of position there. Come on. Nope, out of range. Almost wiping out one entire group of US Marines there. 
The situation in hotel is under control. Blue has neutralized the points over here, so it's getting another plus three. And with that amount of point income, it really only takes a few minutes, or rather a few seconds in this case, to get up to the 500 point mark. Good game. Both red and blue fought valiantly. Uh, red almost had it in the middle. And then blue did that offensive right across the river with the uh, A8-7s, with the Lynxes. Don't ever underestimate those rocket pods. It seemed like red just had a little bit too little anti-air. And because of that, these Lynxes and the Harriers, of all jets, the Harriers, were able to just, well, go to town. Quite literally, just bombing the towns time and time again, pushing back against the infantry. And as the infantry was not getting any kind of support from anti-air, they were just going down left, right, and center. Anyway, that's the end of this game. Let's have a look at the amount of points that were scored. 4,280 points scored in kills and 2,160 in losses. Now, I know it's conquest, so it doesn't matter that much. But it does, of course, matter in the amount of units that they had available. I cannot look at the kill list because I was in neutral mode, so I cannot see any particular uh, list from red or blue from either of the players. But overall, these guys did very, very well. Hope you guys enjoyed the game. Again, if you have a replay of your own that you'd like me to show off, link down below in the description. Make sure you give it a good description in uh, the way that you send in the replay. Uh, a replay that just says, uh, good game, 10v10 tanks, it's not interesting. I'm immediately going to delete that. But if you write up what happened, why it would make an interesting video, who I should follow, and what particular unit might be very interesting to watch, see, that's something I can work with. So the more effort you put in, the more likely it is going to be turned into a video. Sell me on your replay. Again, link down below in the description. Anyway, let's uh, put another celebration out to Wargame Red Dragon, turning six today. Uh, I really hope that Eugen is working on another Wargame. I don't know. I think they could use the success from Steel Division 2, but or sorry, from Wargame uh, as Steel Division 2 is a bit meh as far as I'm concerned. I don't like the game. Um, I would really love another Wargame. What setting, what scenario, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see if a game like this is ever going to come out again. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you soon for more videos.